Stephen Hadley with Sonora, John Whitaker with Ryan's son, Nick Skelton with St. James. Those two, first and second in the European League at the moment. Liz Edgar with a very informed Everest Forever, and Jean Germany, who was second in this championship last year with Whistling Song. And behind me, he'll be coming at the side, I think, now, of Tom Hudson and Alison Dawes. Well, the course has been altered considerably, and it is big and tricky. A lot of turns. The first jump off, of course, is not against the clock. If we have equality after this round, then they will jump again against the clock for the first prize of £2,400. Stephen Hadley with Peter Vess's Sonora. A very, very consistent mare, this one. Always seems to pull it out on the big occasion. Well, this course now is really a test of jumping. There's no time involved. And the course builder, Alan Ball, has used the very difficult end of the arena at the very beginning of this course. Fences come up quickly. The end is that bit narrow. It's just a bit more difficult. So this is very demanding in this round. Starts with what was the third fence, the big triple bar. Goes round to the parallel at the end of the arena and onto the big planks, standing at five foot six. And Stephen giving himself plenty of room to get to the next, which is the big wall that was the last fence at five foot seven. Now he turns left back to fence nine, the white parallel. And left-handed again to the double of uprights to finish this first jump-off course. And again, Stephen very wisely giving himself plenty of room. And jumps it superbly. So Nora keeps her good form. That's a clear round. Well, this mare is jumping out of her skin today. She hasn't put a toe on a pole anywhere. She's answering doing absolutely everything. Steve always rides her very hard. And she is really, really beautiful to watch today, giving everything six inches. Uh, she really is. I mean, she takes a bit of stoking up, though, doesn't she? Yeah, she's so careful. You know, I have a bit of a job to get her two fences, mm -hmm. which works against you, against the clock. But on the other hand, she's so careful, she jumps a lot of clear rounds. Yeah. She hangs in the air a lot, wastes a bit of time in the air. But I like that, you know, because she jumps more clear rounds that way. You, you, it must be your favourite show, this film. You always seem to go so well here. Seems to be. I've only been here a couple of times, you know. I had a good show last year and a very good show this year. And a double clear already in the bag. That's going to put the pressure on the other four. Yeah, but there's some four, aren't they? <laughs> they are good. <laughs> anyway, I'll let you get off and go and watch John Whittaker on Ryan's son, the next to go. Just the two left in for the jump off against the clock for the FEI Volvo World Cup Holland. It's Stephen Hadley with Sonora and John Whittaker with Ryan's son. Both horses with great form. Now let's go outside again and join Derek Thompson. Yes, Tom, and the interesting thing about this jump off is that Sonora is a great steady mare. She should go clear. And if she does, then that'll really put the pressure. It is against the clock. So the pressure really on Steve Hadley, who's got to try and set a very tight time, as Nick Skelton told us. Well, a lot will be going through Steve's mind at this moment as he comes up with Peter Vase's Sonora. And as Stephen told us himself, this horse is a very careful jumper. She keeps jumping clear rounds. And that consistency had him way up in the money rank rankings last year and the year before. Doesn't often really win the very big one because she's not quite so fast against the clock. But he'll be very keen to put the pressure on John Whitaker. And Stephen getting a great round of applause as he comes in. Salutes the jury box. So, £2,400 goes to the winner. 1680 to the second. And, of course, points for the World Cup. Stephen, I don't think, has any ambitions to go to the World Cup final in Vienna, but John Whittaker certainly has, and he's almost guaranteed his ticket because he's way up at the top of the European League. So here we go. He starts with the big parallel across the top end of the arena and then round to those fateful planks that we've seen in that second jump off. Five foot parallel with a six foot spread for the first fence. It's some first fence. The planks at five foot six. 
down across to another parallel at five foot with a six foot spread. Now he turns round to gate seven, the little wicket gate. And he has it down. Oh, what a fence to have. Well, that wouldn't be the one I had expected him to have down because this course starts off all galloping and then develops the end here into turning. And that wouldn't be the one to be looking for. And Stephen now bustling on getting as much time as he can in case John Whittingham makes a mistake. He flies over the wall at five foot seven. Comes home with just four faults in 37.60. A great try, but Stephen would be very disappointed having that gate down, as Alison says that's not the fence you'd expect. Well, he comes round the corner, and perhaps he took a pull when he really should have had a push, because he'd set the horse on a long gallop pr just prior to this, and to come round the corner and take a pull, just picked her head up in the air a tiny bit, made her just clip that gate. The gate of all fences? Yeah, that's one I just thought I could really trust to the jump, you know, I turned in short. I was a little bit close in all fairness. The old girl tried to jump it, you know, but she just towed it out in front. Yeah, you really flew the last, though. You were like Lester Pickett down there. Well, you know, if John has one, I thought I'd better try and get him at it a little bit. Right. But he's got it on a plate now, you know. Well, it's, it's not over yet. Let's go back inside, Steve, anyway. Well, we could have a situation like we had in the Grand Prix. David Broom thought he finished fourth, and he didn't. He won it. Can Stephen Hadley sit back and watch John Whittaker make a mistake? And now turning to the gate. This is the fence that Steve had. He's clear there. Swings round to the double. He can't afford to waste too much time because if he does have a fence down, he'll be in trouble. He's slower than Stephen at this point. Two fences to go, and John being very, very confident as he comes to this triple bar and the wall. A five foot six triple bar, a five foot seven wall coming up, and Ryan still got time to kick back in between. Come on, John. He's there, he boosted the wall, really hit it hard, and he's got a few time faults, but that's irrelevant. The time allows 42, so he'll get 